Welcome to Norton Chemistry. Today we're going to be doing some assays exam questions. Feel free to go ahead and answer the questions and then you can run through the answers. I'll put the link in the description below. A student carries out titration to determine the concentration of some hydrochloric acid. A student titrates the hydrochloric acid against a standard solution of sodium carbonate Na2CO3. The equation is shown below. So we've got sodium carbonate reacting with two moles of hydrochloric acid to form two moles of sodium chloride and water and carbon dioxide gas. The student prepares 0.15 mole per diem cubed of sodium carbonate in a 250 centimeters cubed volumetric flask. The hydrochloric acid is added to a 50 centimeter cubed burette. The student prepares the sodium carbonate using a 25 centimeter cube pipette. The student's burette readings are shown in the table. They've omitted the rough titers. Complete the table while adding the titers to the table. So in titrations, we always measure to two decimal places because that's the resolution of the burette. So it's important that we put two decimal places for each of the titer values. And we can calculate the titer by subtracting the initial reading from the final reading. So 24.6 minus 0.4 is 24.20 centimeters cubed. Then 48.45 minus 24.60 is 23.85, then 34.3 minus 10, 24.30. Calculate the mean title of HCl to the nearest 0.05 centimeters cubed that the student should choose for analyzing the results. So when we're calculating the mean title, we must use the concordant titers. So these are titers that are within 0.1 centimeters cubed of each other. So as you can see from these titers, 24.20 and 24.30 are within 0.1 centimeters cubed of each other, and 23.85 is not a concordant titer, so we remove that one and calculate a mean using just those two concordant titers. So that's 24.20 plus 24.30 divided by 2, which is 24.25 centimeters cubed. Then we're being asked to calculate the concentration in mole per diem cubed of the hydrochloric acid and we have to give the answer to three significant figures. So we've got the volume of HCl and in order to find the concentration we need to find the moles because the concentration is equal to the moles divided by the volume. And if we have a look at the question again we can see that we've got 25 centimeters cubed of sodium carbonate because we're using a 25 centimeter cube per pet and the sodium carbonate is 0.15 mole per diem cubed. So the moles of sodium carbonate is going to be equal to the concentration times the volume. So that's 0.15 times 25 over 1000 to convert to decimeters cubed, which is 3.75 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Then if we look at the equation, the ratio of HCl to sodium carbonate is 2 to 1. So that means that we need to multiply the moles of sodium carbonate by 2 to find the moles of HCl. So 3.75 times 10 to the minus 3 times 2 is 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Then to find the concentration, we simply divide the moles, so 7.5 times 10 to the minus 3, by the volume, which is the mean titer, which is 24.25 centimeters cubed, divided by 1,000 to convert to decimeters cubed, which is 0.309 mole per diem cubed to three significant figures. In the titrations, the student measured the volumes with a pipette and a burette. The pipette had an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.04 centimeters cubed in the volume measured, and the burette had an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.05 centimeters cubed in the volume measured. Determine whether the volume measured by the pipette or the volume measured by the burette have the greater percentage uncertainty. So we need to first recall the formula for the percentage uncertainty, which is the number of measurements times the uncertainty divided by the measurement multiplied by 100. So for the pipette, for each measurement, we take one reading. So the percentage uncertainty is going to be 0.04 divided by the measurement, which is 25 centimeters cubed, times 100, which is 0.16%. And then for the burette, we need to multiply by two because for each measurement, we take two readings, and the smallest measurement is 24.2, so we need to divide by that. Then we need to multiply by 100, which gives us 0.41%. So clearly the burette has a larger percentage uncertainty. Sodium hydroxide is an alkali. What is meant by the term alkali? Well, an alkali is a soluble base, so it's a proton acceptor and it dissolves in water to release OH- ions. Ethanoic acid, ch 3 h is the main dissolved acid in vinegar. Ethanoic acid is a weak acid. What is meant by acid and weak acid? So an acid is defined as a proton donor, so it dissolves in water to release H plus ions. And a weak acid partially dissociates in water to release H plus ions. Student investigates the reaction between strontium carbonate and dilute nitric acid. So we can see that strontium carbonate reacts with two moles of nitric acid to form strontium nitrate, carbon dioxide and water. The rate of reaction is determined from the loss in mass over a period of time. Explain why there was a loss in mass during the reaction. So we can see that CO2 is being formed and CO2 is a gas at room temperature and pressure. 
So as the gas forms, it leaves the reaction mixture and that causes a loss in mass. An excess of strontium carbonate is mixed with 20 cm cubed of 1.25 mole per dm cubed nitric acid. Calculate the mass of strontium carbonate that reacts with the HNO3. First, we can find the moles of nitric acid using the equation moles equals concentration times volume. So the moles is going to be equal to 20 cm cubed divided by 1000 to convert to decimeters cubed multiplied by 1.25 mole per dm cubed, which is 0.025 mole. Then, if we look at the equation, we can see that the ratio of nitric acid to strontium carbonate is 2 to 1. So to find the moles of strontium carbonate, we need to divide the moles of nitric acid by 2, which is 0.0125 moles. Then, we can find the mass by using the formula moles equals mass over MR. So therefore, mass equals moles times MR. So the mass is going to be equal to 0.0125 mole multiplied by 147.6 grams per mole, which is 1.845 grams. But then we need to use the same number of significant figures as we're given in the question. And they give all the numbers to three significant figures. So then to three significant figures, the answer is 1.85 grams. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out my amount of substance exam questions video, which should be in the bottom right hand corner now. You can also visit my website to purchase my notes and flashcards. The link will be in the description below.